Welcome everyone to another edition of Ozarks Voices. My name is Tom Peters. I'm the Dean of Libraries at Missouri State University. Uh, today's date is beyond a reasonable doubt, November 3rd of 2016. Uh, we're at the Hangar Cafe in rural Lawrence County in uh, western Missouri. And uh, we have two special guests with us today. We have Jean Burns uh, in, the, in the red shirt. Um, uh, and uh, we have Richard Turk in the uh, blue shirt, uh, just to keep them separated. Um, and they both have, they have longtime residents of this region, and they both have memories about Route 66 and uh, businesses and families and operations along Route 66. So let me just ask you first, Gene, um, mm -hmm. where and when were you born? I was born in 1948 in San Antonio, Texas. Really? How did you get, uh, how did you end up in, in western Missouri, southwest uh, Missouri? During the war, my uh, mother and father were airplane mechanics at Kelly Field in San Antonio. My dad was raised in West Texas, and uh, my grandparents on my mom's side lived here at Albatross. Uh -huh. And we moved to uh, south of Aurora first, and then we moved over here by Mount Vernon. Okay. So you spent, well, you spent most of your life here? Uh, I lived in Walnut Grove a little while, and then uh, most of the rest of the time I lived here in Lawrence County. Okay. Uh, and then I was, uh, went to school in Mount Vernon. And then we uh, went to 4-H here at Phelps, which is on Route 66. Mm -hmm. And then my grandparents lived at the top of the hill there at Albatross. And I can remember uh, my grandparents farming with teams there on, along Route 66. Really? And. Uh, and then the more I think about Route 66, the more things I think about that in my life, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a kind of a strong influence. Yeah. Uh, and then going to college in Springfield, uh, I was up there on Route 66. You must have traveled Route 66 a lot, back and forth right. Uh, right. to Springfield. And then Richard, where, where and when were you born? I was born, well, actually, on quarter mile north of old 66 our place bordered on both sides really february 28 1937. 1937 yeah. so uh route 66 was paved by then yeah. took them a while to pave it all the way from chicago to la but the last stretches i think that were unpaved were in uh, new mexico and arizona um so what let's start with your own memories of 66 so what do you remember about you know traffic uh memorable memorable events well the biggest truck line was camel 66. Mm. <laughs> i can remember those see a lot of camel trucks uh go lots on. of them uh -huh. yeah sure was yeah. now when i was a kid we used to do this to try to get them to yeah they did <laughs> <laughs> Get them to honk their horn. Yeah, we used to do that. Yeah. Uh, and there were a lot of businesses along the road? Oh, everywhere. Every few miles there was stations and maybe a little mall cafe. Well, there was all the cafe in the small. Yeah. <laughs> little gas stations. Now, would you frequent those or would you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever run into anybody who was going cross country and uh oh yeah i uh, well when i got out of service in uh, 58 and i was at a i had a buddy in san jose california and i was at a little well just a before you get to M Highway up there on the side of the road, there's two gas pumps yeah. and, and hamburgers and all they sold. Uh -huh. And a car uh -huh. stopped there, and it was the buddy I was in the service with from San Jose, California. Really? Yeah. You didn't know he was coming through? or No. Yeah. Didn't have a clue. Yeah. No. And so there he was. Ran to an old friend, huh? Yeah. So when did you, when did you serve? Do what? When did you serve in the, were you in the Army, Navy? Air Force. Air Force? Mm -hmm. 
What, what, what were the years that you served in the Air Force? Uh, 55 to 59, uh -huh. active, then four years inactive. Yeah. Where were you stationed? Well, I was stationed at uh, uh, Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio. Uh -huh. Carswell Air Force Base, Illinois. Ran to the well, Illinois. Yeah. That's two years in Touch College, Japan, hmm. and then come back to uh, Fort Worth, uh -huh. Carville Air Force Base. Okay. Did you ever drive 66 all the way out west? No. Yeah. I rode a bus. Did you? <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Oh, well, I thought that uh, that's when I come back from Japan. And it was almost, well, it was about a three day trip. It was forever. <laughs> We'd ever get home. Uh huh. <laughs> no. Did you stop a lot? A lot. Yeah. Almost, well, I thought maybe they was going to stop at every mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> so that would have been in, in, the, in the 50s. Yeah, that would have been in. Uh, 58. Yeah. Was it a lot of traffic on the highway? Oh. Well. Well, I'll, probably I thought it was then, but it wouldn't be. Compared to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, 66, you, you would have gone through a lot of towns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any memorable towns that you went through? Mm -hmm. I don't know why uh, Reno, Nevada has always stood out. <laughs> really? <laughs> there, yeah. yeah. It just seemed like a memorable town. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, so uh, when you when you when you were both younger, um, did. Did Route 66 have any aura to it? Did it have any, did you think, oh, I'm on 66 as opposed to some other highway, or was it just another highway? Well, it, it was just kind of another. <laughs> yeah. It was the quickest way between two points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you weren't even, you know, weren't aware. Like today, when we're on I-70 or I-44, you're aware that you're on I-44, but yeah. you don't think this is special, but it's, you were aware you're on it. I mean, were you aware, were you aware you were on 66? Or? I, well, I don't think so. See, mm -hmm. I was on it every day all my life. You yeah. Know, then, and it, just, it was just, it just there. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Jim? Well, I think uh, I remember it being, you know, somewhat special. Uh, when we visit my grandparents there, I know we'd get out there and we'd. Uh, each one of us kids would pick a color of a car and we'd count uh, who had the most. Uh, cars that would yeah. come by, you know, in, in a certain length of time, and then the service stations there, there was a lot of those, and then we would go down Mr. Wilson's store there at Albatross, and he had like a uh, uh, soda fountain bar there, and uh, sold groceries, and, you know, we'd go down and get soda pop or candy bars for not very much money, and, uh, yeah. and then, uh, I guess it was after I graduated from high school, we hauled hay, like, from Mount Vernon to Springfield, and that was a period of time they were building I-44, and uh, we uh, we'd haul hay up to Springfield, and uh, and uh, the construction was going on, and it was always in your way, and yeah. we was in a hurry, and, <laughs> and uh, more of a nuisance than yeah, it uh, it was different, yeah. and you, you, at that time you really didn't uh, understand, you know, Route 66 or I-44, what they were. Yeah. Or becoming. Yeah. But we were talking before we started the camera that there were so many businesses along Route 66 that um, it really had an economic impact on the eight states through which it passed. Um, did you, when you were when you were younger, and uh, did you did you did you see Route 66 as um, you know uh, an economic benefit for the region? Well, yeah, the 
know, everybody, right. all the farmers you you had to use it to move all your cattle to market, right. Right. any other market. Uh, years ago, when the well, actually, you would see truckloads that ever spraying truckloads of the Mexican people. They would be a in the back of the truck, it'd be full of people. Uh -huh. Go up 66. Migrant workers? Yes. Yeah. And uh, then in the fall, you'd see them come back. Uh huh. And every year. Going up to pick crops. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, we're not too far from, uh, you know, when did, when did the uh, lead mines, uh, when did they start to, uh, you know, jobs left? And uh, were they, was it still active in the no, 40s? No, that was. That was exactly before my time. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember that either much. Mining wasn't a big part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, with Fort Leonard Wood, I don't know if they, you know, a lot of servicemen would come to Springfield when they had a weekend yeah. pass. I don't know if they'd go on to Joplin or not. Or, well, a lot of the, I can still mm -hmm. remember when I was a kid, the old military trucks, you know. Uh -huh. Coming down. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned getting candy bars and, and pop uh, coming down to the store and, and uh, you know when I was growing up the, the way pop was dispensed was uh, in, a, in a big cooler and they were in bottles and they yeah. hung by the neck of the bottle mm -hmm. yeah. and you'd put in a dime and then you'd move the one you wanted. There were different tracks, so they'd have orange and you know, root yeah. beer and cola. Slide. You'd slide it around yeah. and you'd pull it out. Was that the way it was when you two were? Well, it was like that, only it was a nickel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the same technology. Same. And I'm not sure if someone younger here is I'd hearing this, the that they'd understand what we're talking about. But I'd say the same machine. Yeah. <laughs> So it was, it was, they were glass bottles. Yeah. And then the machine, the, the, it was a little bit, it was a little bit wider at the top of the bottle. And so you'd put them in there and they'd cool down. Yeah. And they were all just resting on their necks. And so you'd actually kind of slide it around and um, well, pull it out. And then you return the bottle because it was... Uh, well, the, mm -hmm. yeah, the bottle was uh, two or three cents. Yeah. Return. Yeah. I think Mr. Wilson's store even had uh, uh, the type that had the ice blocks in there, and then the, the uh, pop was in inside there. Really, ice in the box. ice. A regular ice ice box. Huh? And then the Walt Schuster down there, he had the, the bar down there, and he had uh, one of those machines over in the corner where he had uh, all the beer in, in one of those coolers, and uh -huh. that's the way he dispensed it. Uh huh. <laughs> um, so were there a lot of, I uh, don't want to put you on the spot, but were there a lot of uh, bars and, I mean, was that part of the life on Route 66 was, well, there was you could have a good time yeah, on a Saturday night? Later <laughs> on, yes, there were several later on, yeah. Any, any memories of those nights that you'd want to share with us? <laughs> well, a lot of them, like from Walls here at Crossroads and then uh, Hillbilly Haven and then uh, Hilltop, on up toward Barnes store, and then we're in college club. We patronized a lot of them across Springfield up there. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, there were a lot of them. West College on Springfield still has quite a few uh, of the uh, motor court hotels. It's sometimes they're yeah. hard to spot, mm -hmm. but they're still there. Um, some are in better shape mm -hmm. than others, but there were quite a few. Um, did you ever read it? Did you ever read it? Reds, Giant Hamburg. Yes. Huh? And now seven, seven Gables up there. Uh, uh -huh. I used to have a guy train horses. Uh, right now it'd be on the uh, west side of uh, I-44, and then we go eat at uh, Seven Gables over there and drink coffee there. Yeah. Uh, there was a dance hall. I want to see the Chesterfield Club. South side of 66, about where 40, maybe a little bit east of where 44 crosses. There's a Ritz Club in there. Ritz, the Ritz. Ritz. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever go to the Ritz? Yeah. Any memorable evenings at the Ritz? 
I didn't know there a whole lot, but I remember going there. Do you remember Ray Fawcett? Right, that and then you? Ray Fawcett was from Mount Vernon, and, and they actually owned the Seven Gables uh, uh -huh. restaurant truck stop there. Okay. And then there's Rain's Hereford House that was on down the road there, a little bit on the north side, and it was a real popular place to eat and had uh -huh. really good food. Yeah. I remember going there a lot in the 70s. Uh, so the railroads didn't come through this area, they went farther south. The railroad went right through Mentworth. Really? Crossed, uh, really? Crossed old 66, oh, uh, about what, five or six mm -hmm. miles up. Well, you know where Andy Adams is? Yeah, from, right. Just west of there, top of the hill. The railroad come through Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. come through here, come. right through Miller and went to Greenfield. Uh huh. Go yeah. all the way up to Kansas City? Or? You know, I don't know if it did. Was there ever a passenger rail service on that line? Oh, I think, I don't think actually it was a passenger, but you know, they all a few people. <laughs> and actually, they said that, that the reason it come from Mount Vernon to Miller, that there used to be apple orchards all through the country mm -hmm. there, and that's why. All the apples? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence County was also a big dairy county. Yeah. Back in the day. Uh, were either of you ever involved in dairy farming? We raised dairy cattle and milk cows when I was growing up. Did you? And you were talking about the apples. My uh, grandfather did a lot of grafting and was mm -hmm. real involved in, in fruits and grapes and, mm -hmm. uh, and vegetables. And he had an orchard there that he had. Uh, uh, one tree there where he had draft, drafted like eight or nine different varieties of apples on that one tree. And I remember we grafted uh, like Black Thomas walnuts on the, the uh, native walnut trees and we yeah. grafted some pecans and English walnuts. But yeah. the, the Black Thomas were the main ones that ever really did, did well. Did you, uh, did you uh, when you were younger, did you uh, gather walnuts every fall? Yeah, we did. Yeah. That was our Christmas money. Really? And my mom, she picked up a lot of walnuts. Yeah. Fifteen pound, a hundred weight. Fifteen dollars, a hundred weight this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were two, three back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they got a good crop this year, but they were paying top dollar. Well, not like it has been, but they were some place pretty decent. Yeah. Um, Route sixty six was also a dangerous road. A lot of accidents. Uh, any accidents you remember? Or? Well, I remember <clears throat> up there by uh, <clears throat> Hillbilly Haven, there were several people that got killed there on some of those bridges right there by that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a guy from Mount Vernon, I remember, he was a little older when I was in school, got killed there. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of accidents, and then you go to Spencer there and you wonder how all those semis could. Uh, run back and forth through there and on that curve before you cross the bridge, how they could all get through there and not have any wrecks. Yeah. The undertakers mm -hmm. used to use the purse as an ambulance. Mm -hmm. They all would be, that's what they all would be. <laughs> so maybe you might have started your trip in an ambulance and ended up in a hearse if you passed away. <laughs> yeah. <in the trance. laughs> well, <laughs> the same guy had you, you <laughs> Um, you know, so part of the myth of Route 66 is that, uh, uh, you know, there's love to be found on Route 66. And, you know, you could meet mm -hmm. the person of your dreams on Route 66. So, uh, <laughs> any, any recollections of, you know, having a good date or? Uh... Well, I don't know about that so much, but I didn't date too much until, uh, got on in college, but uh, uh -huh. uh, another big memory for me was uh, <clears throat> being involved in the horse industry. Dale Burke had, uh, well, there was Burke Bag Company originally. It was not far from Red's there on Chestnut Expressway. Uh -huh. And then it turned to a Triple A Feed Company, and then PFI, uh -huh. and then Randy and Dale uh, became partners, and then uh, uh, Randy bought Dale out, and then he moved it on out there uh, on uh, Battlefield later. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I spent I a lot that. of hours there in, uh, in PFI, uh -huh. and then Dale was a good friend, and, uh, and I shot his horses for a lot of years. Uh -huh. 
and then I remember showing a lot of horses along Route 66, and then I did a lot of cattle work for other people, gathering cattle and uh -huh. catching wild cattle, and uh, and then after my, my dad passed away, then I I stayed down here with my mom's son and worked for Dwayne Hubbard, and it's the Santa Fe Ranch now, mm -hmm. and uh, he owned both sides of the road there, the conservation land and really? uh, the part on the north side, mm -hmm. and then uh, then I worked at a lot of the the places along Route 66 there. Uh, uh, Ernie Given has a place up here right now. It's uh, on the uh, on west up here a little ways on the south. And then uh, and then used to gather cattle some for Bob Gammon there by barn store. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a lot of places through there. Yeah. Do the businesses, do they feel like they were in competition with each other? With so many. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if they did or not. They well, the, the gas wars, they had those. You well, know, yeah, they the, used to have the, the gas wars would break yeah, up. The yeah. 50s, there were, there were yeah. a lot of those. I remember being, you know, 10, 12, 20 cents, you know, and they, they'd all lower their price and, uh, and try to get the business. So we were talking about there were so many gas mm -hmm. stations. I don't know how it worked. Did they just buy the gas from a wholesaler mm -hmm. and then they... Once they paid for it, they could charge whatever. They could yeah, sell it. Know, they could sell it below cost if they yeah, wanted. To. They could you know, give it away. You know, whatever they want to do is yeah. there. Were most of them what we'd call today independent gas stations, or yeah, yeah. there was yeah. Yeah, they were just selling gas. Yeah. So we were talking again before we started the before we started the interview that um, there were so many mom and pop tourist cabins kind of six cabins, semi-circle. Yeah. In the center, you'd have sort of a combination gas station and cafe, restaurant. Yeah. And usually, like, the family would live in a house nearby on the property, yeah. and that was their business. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's kind of the archetypal um, Route 66 mm -hmm. business. And, you know, place to sleep, place to get gas, and place to eat. Good job. And you're on your way. Yeah. <laughs> But there were other businesses along along the road as well. So yeah, uh, some bars, yeah. uh, some standalone restaurants. See, like Miller here at one time, there was uh, three machinery dealers within two miles of each other. There was uh, Miller had uh, John Deere and Case. Alice Chalmer was two miles right out on the highway, uh -huh. straight south. Now, the other thing that people in the 21st century might have a hard time conceptualizing is that the, the rural population was much larger than it is today. A lot of people lived in yeah, the country. Yeah. And so, what was that like? What, you know, you had a lot of neighbors, but well, you were still our, living in the country? There was five of us kids. Our closest neighbor had 13. 13 which kids. Was quarter mile, 13 kids. Another probably a quarter of a mile, the Garners, they had 13 kids. <laughs> so that was just a lot of, and uh, you'd go to, how, where'd you go to school? Grade school? Fair play there mm -hmm. on Old 66. All right. And then right after that, they consolidated so, yeah. and then they closed it. Did you have to, did you walk or how'd you get to school? Yeah. How far was it? Oh, we had to walk. Oh. Well, be a half mile exactly. Half mile. And one time, our teacher, that Mildred Green, she lived, uh, let's see, half a mile. She walked. She walked a mile and three quarters to school every day. Wow. Rain, snow, shine, freeze. Was it a one one room school house? No, it was two rooms in the basement. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, at that time, it was the nicest school in the whole country because it was new, and we actually had hot lunches there. Really? Several years before the high schools even had. Really? Yes. Who did. made your lunch for you? Well, the two of the neighbor ladies. I'm sure they probably paid them a little something. Wouldn't have been much. Uh -huh. Didn't give teachers much. Yeah. I've got some records that my dad was on the school board. And uh, my sis belongs to the Historical Society here in Clarks County. Uh -huh. She showed me all that old stuff. Yeah. So two local 
neighbor women would yeah. make lunch every day. Yeah. For, and walk to school too. So, so when was school in session? When, when, when would you start? Late August or? Well, we just had. We had, uh, what, just eight months of school or was it nine? I, I'm not sure. When would you get out in the spring? Would you get out April, May? So you could help on the farm? <laughs> well, I remember, I, I'm not sure about that, but I, I always kind of dreaded summer because I knew <laughs> Dad was going to have plenty of work. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of look forward to school, yeah. so you get rested up a little bit, huh? <laughs> I think I started school in September and we got out the first part of May. First part of May. And then we'd stay home from school. Sometimes I remember staying home from school, plowing all day when I was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Does it just need to be done? Yeah, it just needed to be done and that yeah. worked. And yeah. There was a lot of that back then. Yeah. Uh, so you went to SMS. Did you go to SMS? No. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, so describe what, what was that like going to, did you live on campus or did you live well, on campus? Well, I started out at MU and went to Crowder and then I finished uh, up at SMS. Oh, so you, you were a seasoned college student by the yeah, time you at SMS. Yeah, I guess you can call it that. <laughs> so uh, where did you live when you were uh, attending the SMS? Uh, first year I was up there, I worked at a, a stable just kind of cleaning stalls and feeding horses. and. Uh, of the guy trained horses, and that would have been a natural bridge stables. It was uh, south of town there on James River. Oh, yeah. And then the uh, the next year, my senior year, I worked for Ms. Hensley there at Fairhill Farms, which was just across the road from there. Uh -huh. And we uh, took care of cattle and stuff. And, uh, and then I've always been involved in horses, and uh, uh, we had, uh, when I was up there, we started. Uh, well, we had a horse show there one year, and then we started the Rodeo and Saddle Club my senior year. And then uh, then after I graduated from college, I got drafted. And then I started shooting horses when I got out of the service. I uh, helped Bob Zip shoot horses there, and he was shooting most of the mm -hmm. horses around Springfield at that time. And I worked for his father-in-law at uh, Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. uh, doing farm work when I was uh, in school. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I helped him that summer, and then that fall I uh, took some business classes at SMS, just kind of have something to do. And, and then we started the rodeo club, and so I just kind of did that to. So you you were one of the founders of the rodeo club at SMS. We started uh, that my senior year, uh -huh. and then we put on the first rodeo that was uh, probably ever held in the Coliseum out there at the fairgrounds. And then we got KTTS to co-sponsor that, and then they filled that up all three nights. And, really? And, uh, and then they had a rodeo team up there for a lot of years after that. Yeah. Up there at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds? Uh, that's where we had them when, when I was up there, but yeah. uh, they had a lot of other places later. Yeah. Um, so on uh, Saturday night, did you... Uh, did, I, did, you go, did you stay in town on a Saturday night, typical Saturday yeah, night? Yeah, we... Uh, Whoop it up uh, a little bit? Well, I lived out there at the stable in uh, uh, junior year, and then, uh, and then I guess I had an apartment in my senior year. Uh -huh. It was over there on the uh, north. It was still press 90, I think, so they called it in. It was on the north county up there. Uh -huh. and, uh, but then, oh, I'd go home some on the way.
we had a teacher from Springfield, Edith Reese, and uh, she knew everybody in Springfield, and our first pie supper was a big deal. You know, they would sell pies, you know, yeah. once a year. Yeah. Pie supper. Pie supper. Yeah. And uh, so, one time she brought the bell ring, Slim Wilson, and uh, let's see, bell ring, Slim Wilson, Tony Thornton. Uh huh. That was the Because that was before TV, so they were yeah. all on radio. Yeah. They had TVs then. But they were like the uh, main attractions at the Pie yeah, Center. They were entertainers, and Tony, of course, was all from here, sold the pie. So tell us more about pie suppers. How they work? How how'd they well, get started? The girls would bring a pie, yeah. covered, and then the guy, if you bought the pie, you got to eat the pie with the girl. Eat the pie. Yeah. Right then and there. Well, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. yeah. And you might get to kiss the girl. Well, I guess. That or might. at least compliment her on her pie. <laughs> well, and it was you bid, you bid on the pie, yeah, and then the proceeds would go to support a worthy cause. Oh yeah, I went mean, back to the school. Yeah. yeah. So it was a fundraiser for the yeah. school. Yeah. No, that's well, that's one of them. Yeah. But it was. Uh, I've heard that pie, pie suppers they became quite elaborate. So that if uh, I heard a story that. Uh, if a young woman knew that a, a young man that she didn't really care for was going to bid on her pie, often she and her mother would swap pies. And so the young man would be bidding on what, she, what he thought was the daughter's pie, but then he would bid it up and get it and it'd be the mom. Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, if a young woman liked the man, that young man that she thought was going to bid on her pie, they all came in cover, right, or in a box or something. So yeah. she might actually lift the cover a little bit and show the young man that this is the pie you need to bid on. And then, and then maybe some other guy won't stop you from getting it, you know. Right, a bidding war. Yeah. Know of anybody who got married that they first met at a pie supper? Mm, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> So, so at one of these pie suppers, Slim Wilson, Tony Martin, and uh, uh, <laughs> we got it on tape. <laughs> Those three came. Yeah. Just to did they did they perform? Yeah. Tony Tony sold the pies. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, Slim and Bill Ray. Well, Bill Ray. Slim. Bill was a comedian. He's a pretty portly fellow. Uh -huh. he, he was kind of heavy set guy. Yes. yes. Yeah. Comedian. Yeah. Yeah. They, they weren't doing a KWTO broadcast from. No. Uh -huh. No, they were just there. Yes. As a friend, they were just friends with the yeah. organizer. Yeah. Teacher. Yeah. yeah. The Tommy Thornton had a cell bar there by the fairgrounds there in Springfield. Really? Yes. Yeah. Sales and everything. Yeah. I remember we bought our. Of course, up there, but that's well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I want to keep you all afternoon. But uh, uh, one yeah. the last thing that I the one thing I can really remember, huh. and I can remember it just as plain, and it was 1958. I bought a bus ticket to San Francisco, California, and we was in line there. Of course, all those military coming home. We was in line there, and while I stepped up there, and I thought it was going to be funny, this old gentleman was, you know, ticket agent behind the window there. He said, where to, buddy? And I said, Albatross, which, you know, is out here. <laughs> That's all I said. And he didn't do nothing. He just pulled the ticket out, snapped her, and slid it out there. He knew exactly where it was at. He knew where Albatross was. Yeah, he was in, in, uh, in San Francisco, California. <laughs> He didn't say a word. He, said, he knew his routes. And, uh, he knew his routes and yeah, he knew every place. If he shoved her out there, man, he said, next. <laughs> 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 I've never been able to get over that. Yeah. 
So what's, what was the population of albatross back when you were in the Well, probably three. <laughs> <laughs> three. Yeah. Population today is about... Uh, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, again, thanks very much for uh, sharing some of your memories about Route 66 and Ozark Jubilee and pie suppers and uh, shoeing horses. <laughs>